From the beginning of January, over on my Substack, I'm hosting a non-fiction book club. We are going to begin the book, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. It is completely free to join in with the read along. You just have to be subscribed to my newsletter, which you can do at helenredfern.substack.com. There will also be bonus content for paid subscribers. I'll link the post with all the information about how you can join in below. So, why are we beginning January with The Artist's Way? I've had this book on my bookshelf for several years now, but have only dipped in now and again. I've never read it all the way through, never read through the 12-week the course, because the book is a 12-week course. So in the non-fiction book club, we'll be working through it week by week until the end of March. The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron aims to guide you through the process of recovering your creative self. It aims to dispel the I'm not talented enough conditioning that can hold people back. It was first published in 1992 and in recent years there have been further editions. It's incredibly popular but I also think it puts people off like me because there is a commitment required and consistency involved. Julia Cameron says she has given us the tools required to change our creative lives. It's then up to us to put in the work. Over the last few years, I've worked a lot with unconfident creatives, women who felt guilty or silly even for spending time on their creative projects, people who procrastinated because they feared failing or even succeeding, creatives who'd compare their own work unfavorably with others or felt like an imposter who didn't belong in the creative world. I've even had conversations with wannabe creatives. I say wannabe because they're desperate to write or create, but they just don't know where to start. The internet gives the impression they can do anything and then gives advice with lots of rules they should be following. It's overwhelming, scary and unnecessarily restrictive. And I have a feeling that the artist's way can help with all of that. As Emma Gannon says in her quote at the front of my edition, it's a really good starting point to discover what lights you up. I've been reading the first few pages. My aim is to read everything up to the chapter called week one before the start of January. And already I feel inspired. Julia talks about how she started the practices she advocates in the book when she realized she couldn't go on writing the way she was with the aid of alcohol. But she was worried that if she stopped drinking, her creativity would disappear completely. She says, I learned to get out of the way and let that creative force work through me. She also says, by resigning as the self-conscious author, I wrote freely. Another quote that actually sent goosebumps going through me was, leap and the net will appear. Now there is a lot of mention of God, spirituality and the great creator in this book. Julia Cameron actually says that creativity is a spiritual experience. If you are not a believer, this might be a sticking point for you, but Julia says you don't have to believe in order to do the course, but she does encourage you to be open-minded. In the introductory section, Julia also mentions the basic tools. These are morning pages and the artist's date. You may have already heard of Morning Pages. If you follow Amy McNee on Instagram, you'll know she writes in her journal every single day and she credits this practice with changing her life as a creative. And then if you look at some of the comments underneath my Substack post introducing the book, you'll see it has also changed other people's lives too. One writer says, I first got all the way through this book including all of the morning pages and exercises in 2022 and it really did have a huge impact 
so huge apparently that it leaked into 2023 and I'm still figuring stuff out from insights that came up for me. So be prepared to have your mind blown in a good way. Another writer says, I did The Artist Way in January 2000. It was an incredibly exciting time and led to everything I am doing now. And another says, I bought the book a few years ago and I established a routine and the artist date in which I found it to be life changing. Someone else says, I worked through maybe half of this book about 20 years ago and it was transformative. I also know for the sake of honesty that so there are some people out there who just didn't get on with it. But as with everything in life, you don't know until you try. And what better way to have a go at something than with the company of others? So, have I convinced you to join in with a read-along within the Nonfiction Book Club yet? If you'd like to start 2024 with a gentle course within a lovely community of like-minded people, then do think about giving it a go. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Like I say, it doesn't cost you anything to take part and read alongside other people and to do the exercises, except for the price of the book. I should point that out. <laughs> You've got nothing to lose and potentially everything to gain. And I'll also be there with you working through all the exercises at the same time.